Hey guys, Artosis here, bringing you some more RISS in this best of seven between Amihu and DeWalt. Right now, DeWalt is winning one to zero. Kind of a wild game uh, in that game number one, but obviously that is something you get a lot with Mihu. He attacks more than probably any other Terran of his level or above. Uh, and a lot of people ask me about Mihu's level. I would put it just below Korean pro gamer level. Uh, and a, a little bit above, like, all the other, uh, like, non-Korean players. Although there are, you know, the people that are, like, kind of close to Mihu or similar level would be, like, Siki and uh, maybe Bonneth and maybe DeWalt and, uh, you know, uh, there are there are a few out there. Jean Hun is pretty good, the other Chinese Protoss player. Um, but, yeah, definitely... A very strong player that definitely has his own style that literally no Korean pro plays like Mihu. So it's it's always fascinating for me to watch him. Whereas DeWalt has a very kind of standard Korean-esque style, which is not something that you can say about most of the other non-Korean players. Uh, DeWalt really taking it seriously, trying to get to that pro level. And I think, uh, you know, with continued effort, he's, he's likely to make it eventually. Like... <laughs> Uh, when you're playing like him and it's not so stylistic and it's more like, okay, we're actually learning all the best things that you can do and how to micro properly and macro properly and transition properly, like, that's that's a big deal. Uh, big props to DeWalt for doing that. I think he showed definitely a, a good game to beat Mihu in game one, but it was... It was weird because he was on the ropes for a bit. Like, Mihu was getting some serious damage done, and I, I never quite understand how he does it like the attacks he pulls off literally no one else pulls off attacks like he does so <laughs> i'm not sure what to think about it anyways uh this map is going to be on sylphid nothing crazy started as of yet we'll see yeah he does start that first sell lot me who's gonna scout it first i mean it's a three-player map you're not really too worried about anything here anyways uh but yeah uh while we wait to get it started thank you so much everyone for Checking out Artosis Cast, please do make you sure you hit that subscribe button. And uh Yeah, thanks. Thanks for everything, guys. Appreciate the the support. Hope that you're enjoying. I really am enjoying these uh awesome best of sevens between the very best of the non-Korean players. Uh of course we have a lot of other tournaments coming up. We've been doing some Moonlight Pro Leagues lately. Uh we did a Survivor series. Uh, there's going to be a new CNSL coming up, which is going to be awesome, especially with my new format of adding, like, getting more longer videos, adding more games where appropriate and everything. I think it's going to be a much smoother and, and better season, kind of showing where we are group-wise and things like that. So, yeah, uh, just great things ahead, I think. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the Zot did get canceled, and by the way, you can see here, this is uh, air attack. So you might be asking yourself, why is he starting air attack? Is this a carrier rush? No, that's a sneak out the SCV. Uh, air attack takes less money. It's 50, 50 less, 50 minerals less, 50 gas less than Dragoon range. So sometimes you start it when you want to get something else uh, and then you just cancel when the SCV leaves, right? SCV left, Dragoon is actually kind of semi looking for it uh, and he cancels at that range. So we should see a robo get thrown down really quickly like he's got so much gas right now he might act, i mean he could go into range from here normally when you see like range cancels it's for a robo and he actually just goes range anyway so it looks like he just wanted to get the double dragoon and by the way that was handsome we didn't get to catch it completely but he ran the dragoon up to tank damage and just kind of gets the probe through to get a full scout off and this is a powerful scout honestly this is not producing which is good intel and this is producing, but no upgrade. So that's like a lot of information there. You know, like you don't have to worry about mines. You don't have to worry about speed. You don't have to worry about a Marine tank a push because there's not really Marines being produced. So this looks like Mew's build from DeWalt's eyes. It looks like an armory should be started pretty soon here. It doesn't have to be, of course. Like you can kind of do what you want, but yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. And by the way, based on his scouting intel, DeWalt throws down a Citadel. Again, no mines, right? If you're going to go for a second factory, you're not going to have any detection. So going for quick DTs here is a great play. Like, it may not necessarily kill uh, kill Mihu, but, you know, it's it's something to 
keep in mind that like you can't really attack into DT builds. <laughs> and in fact, it's going to be a Dark Templar drop. Here's a second gateway. Robo on the way. Templar archives on the way. So yeah, uh, two DTs should be probably dropped off in the main base of Mihu. He is now getting mines. But yeah, it builds like this do pretty poorly against DT drop. Now, occasionally you'll get uh, a scanner with it pretty quickly. I don't see that here. That's more of sharp style. Uh, or a lot of people will go in engineering bay with it, right? And maybe you'll be able to get some turrets up. But either way, the attack should be held off since there won't be any mobile detection. Uh, so it, a lot of it's just going to come down to how much damage can he get before he loses his units. So he comes out, and Dewalt actually dies forward to kill a tank, but he loses one goon and has to do a third volley there, right? So four Dragoons kill a tank in two volleys, but the damage output of Mihu's was high enough that that actually worked out into Mihu's favor, I think. Like, these Dragoons are very, very, very bruised. Now, this attack that's coming out, uh, I, I think you may need to use a Dark Templar to, to stop this. And if you're using Dark Templars to stop it, that will give Mihu enough time to get the detection he needs. Like, he already has the Engineering Bay. As soon as he sees that DTs are out, he will simply throw down, like, four turrets uh, just to be really, really safe. Now, here comes the DT that I believe he needs to stop this. Yeah, you have to send that out. You have to. Oh, drag a mine, drag a mine. Okay, that was not the greatest mine drag. I'm not sure what happened right there. Uh, DT kind of stops in its tracks. But notice how the DT is chasing these tanks down now. The shuttle going across, it only has one Dark Templar in it. Turrets being started. There's the uh, the Academy. And, well, there's a turret. That's very light on turrets, man, for what's coming. <laughs> I guess he didn't realize that it's actually a drop and not just DT's walking because he did lay some mines out in the front. But now DT is in his base. This is really, really annoying. Uh, but he is building a turret. Like, he's got to lay some mines. This is a great move. And, oh my god, he's targeting down the mines with the DT. This is insane right now. So frustrating as a Terran player. In fact, he's going to get the turret before it finishes. And the DT just remains live. The second DT coming in, it has taken a mine hit as well. That's the one that was... I think it was the one that was clearing things out here before. Even two more have been made in a more defensive manner. And real damage is starting, right? This is... This is kind of something I was worried about as we watched the builds unfold. Because if you're doing a build like this, like a two-factory, you're doing a little bit of a coin flip. Uh, not exactly, because DT builds aren't that popular. Uh, but, oops. That's hilarious. Oh my god, they walked together and sat there. Walt wasn't looking. Uh, so instead of losing the factory, both DTs fall. Anyways, um... Yeah, it, that was that was pretty significant damage. The wall is up in workers. Uh, you know, there was certainly a little bit of loss of mining time. A lot of turrets had to be built. Some units died off. And it feels like DeWalt has, like, some good stuff going on, right? Like, look at this. He's got his plus one just started. This is before Mihu's getting any upgrades. He's getting his Arbiter Tribunal. He's got four gates. He's got range on his goons. Uh, he's got an observer out. He's got the shuttle still alive. Yeah, this is a lot of good things going on for him. You can't really set up an attack as Mihu. Uh, if you try to attack from a position like this, like even if you stomp a DT drop, you may not be able to attack the Protoss still. Because two base Arbiter builds, like you actually naturally get a lot of gateways, you produce a lot of units. And if you haven't killed them by the time the Arbiter is popping out, a lot of times you just get really far behind. So between having no detection or very little mobile detection uh, to start out with, and just the build that DeWalt's doing, it does feel pretty rough for Mihu. But he is one of the kings of comeback, so we'll see what he ends up planning here. Several mines out on the side. He does have a missile turret here, a missile turret here, kind of zoning things out. DeWalt looks like he does want to throw something in here. Okay, well, <laughs> it goes right into those three mines. Uh, gonna go ahead and work on a supply depot play and be as annoying as possible. Now, Mihu's moving out. This is the thing about Mihu. Let's see if DeWall ends up holding this, but this is what Mihu is so good at, is these quicker attacks. And, like, honestly, guys, I'm not entirely sure how he does it. I've actually been talking a little bit with Nyokin about it, because it's like, how does... How does he do it? Literally no other Terran in the world gets away with these attacks. 
And he comes up... Okay, he's not going to get away with this either, I don't think. Like, he might end up killing all the Dragoons, but he's losing so many Siege Tanks here. Look at this. All of them... Well, maybe not all... See, he still does pretty well. Uh, but all but two get eliminated. We have five gates producing... What do we have factorized? Five factory. That's a lot of Vultures coming in. Maybe me who really can make something happen here. He's going after this third Nexus. It's not well defended as of yet. Looks like he should be able to get it. Siege is the one very hurt tank. I think it's a good choice. Throws a scan down this very hurt shuttle with his very hurt DT. Eating up some of that detection. Oh, that's a great catch right there. That's a fantastic catch right there. A third siege tank makes a gigantic difference. The Marine kills the shuttle hilariously. Uh, but yeah, it, one thing to mention, guys, is three tanks in siege mode, one shot's a Dragoon. So the third tank is a giant difference when you're engaging. Like, two tanks doesn't do a whole lot. Three tanks really can. Now, a new third Nexus is being put by, down by DeWalt. He is throwing down some pylons as a wall. A lot of vultures are out here, and he's going to go ahead and try to surround some of these goons. More goons coming down. They're going to catch the tanks. Ooh, walking through the mines there. Some of them do end up connecting, and out comes the Arbiter. So now you're going to have to use even more scans than before. Does end up killing those two Dragoons. Nihu pulling back. He somehow has more workers right now than DeWalt. Making his first science vessel. We don't have EMP yet. He is getting some armories, but still 0-0 zero, zero against the plus one of DeWalt. Kind of an insane game once again. Uh, you know, we're, this is like some down and dirty fighting. Uh, normally, like, by the way, just to put this into perspective, right? If you're watching a macro game of Terran vs. Protoss, uh, right about now, Protoss can be maxed with four bases and the Arbiter still. Okay, right now we're at 104 spy, and that doesn't mean DeWalt is bad. It's just we opened with very aggressive strategies. There's been a lot of back and forth. There's been a lot of attacks, right? So, <laughs> looking, comparing this this timestamp to a regular game, I think puts it into very good context of how different this game is, how aggressively both players have been playing it. Now, DeWalt walks in, and actually will get surrounded by the vultures. Just great vulture movement here from Mihu. His Vulture Macro off the charts. Now, unfortunately, his tanks came up to try to help kill those goons. He actually didn't really need them and will lose some to the flanking force coming up here uh, from DeWalt. Now, I think he has a stasis. A stasis here could be huge. No, we don't see any such stasis. The Dragoons are going to have to pull back. And that third base looks like it's going to get up cleanly here for Mihu. In the meantime, we have DeWalt over with 9 o'clock up in mining very well. Retaking this expansion, this mineral only base that was killed off by Mihu earlier on as well. Now, DeWalt trying to walk in here to kill off some of the siege tanks of Mihu. Picks off one, gonna have to walk back. Just such great damage output and blocking here from the Vultures and Goliaths. You know, this is really a superpower of Mihu. He gets the early game. Well, in this case, it was a DT drop that opened it, right? But the amount of attacking he does, he gets the game into such strange positions that we oftentimes see, like this is the second game in a row, we see Mihu doing these attacks with really, really small unit sets. And here's the thing, early on in the game, small unit sets, Protoss generally ends up winning. But once you get speed mines in siege mode, that really changes thing for, things for Terran. Terran can really out micro Protoss at that point. Early on, the units aren't so strong, but when you get those upgrades, uh, it really helps out. And we are, we're seeing that occur multiple times here uh, from Mihu, where DeWalt is attacking in. And it's like, well, he only had one tank against like eight goons and an Arbiter, but a couple of Goliaths and Vultures walk forward. They make it so that the goons can't get up to snipe the siege tank. Suddenly they're taking a ton of damage and they have to pull back. Okay, now we're going to have a recall into the main base. This is going to be huge, guys. Oh, my God. There's only a single mine. Uh, the turret does not quite get the Arbiter. Like, he only had two uh, two turrets there total. So, the Arbiter is still alive. The command center taking massive, massive damage. Mihu flooding in with what he can. Taking quite a beating here. He does have 1-1 one, one upgrades now. So, fighting a bit better against DeWalt than before since he only has that plus one. Uh, but certainly, uh, this will get cleared, but DeWalt ready to attack elsewhere. Look at this. He's going to go ahead, attack into this third base location, and even though the mines are doing a reasonable job, and some vultures will try to come up, this is too big of an army right now. 
He's going to be able to take down that missile turret. The Arbiter going to be able to stay on top of everything there and keep it cloaked, force more scans. What does Mihu do from here? He's trying to resend his SCVs back down to mine. This is like, if this were a war of tempo, Mihu is losing it terribly. And that's oftentimes what happens when recalls are going down is it all becomes tempo based. It's like, okay, Protoss maybe doesn't have the biggest army in the world right now, but he just recalled your main and now he's attacking your third. And Mihu is just playing cleanup all over the place. And if all you're doing is playing cleanup, you're not putting any real pressure on Protoss. So that is going to be the issue that Mihu is dealing with here. The wall pulls back. He's just trying to stall out. He knows that this group of units doesn't do much against this group. So he just pulls back. He'll take whatever he can. But no sense in throwing anything away. Picks off a beautiful play. Picking off a science vessel there. Absolutely the best thing he could do with these units. Leaves the, the rest of his units there to die as he gets out with the Arbiter, very importantly. Taking a fifth base location, but can Mihu do anything against that? He's still got reasonable supply. He's got a good amount of siege tanks. He's got the three add-ons, you can see, uh, because he does need to refill those siege tanks really, really quickly. And yeah, maybe, maybe there's a chance for him to push out. Like, I think, heads up, for sure this army wins, but you get one good stasis or... For instance, you run out of scans, maybe you scan a little bit late and a zealot pulls a mine into your army, that type of thing. Then suddenly the battle can go into DeWalt's favor very, very quickly. Also, don't forget there are counterattack potentials here for DeWalt. Uh, you know, if this army goes and tries to kill, for instance, these two bases, DeWalt could do something like a recall once again. Now he throws down a stasis. That is a good high quality stasis. Gets four units, uh, gets his zealots on top of absolutely everything. And suddenly, the lack of army size, like the lack of additional support vultures here, just destroys Mihu. This has become, like, this went from a game where it's like, okay, maybe Mihu has counterplay, into a game where absolutely he does not very, very quickly. Losing those units, there's really no attacks left over. He's going to bring up his entire army to try to fight at the stasis as it goes off, and it's certainly the right play. Like, he needs to save these units. He needs every single unit he can get. He needs favorable engagements. Doesn't look like he's going to get that, though. The Zelts are on top of a lot of these sea shanks. Turns around and clears the units that came out of that stasis also. Will end up losing those Dragoons, though. Still Mihu taking a great, great fight there, considering his tough position. Fourth command center going up. And let's, let's see. Like, Mihu is going to try to push out once again. And I can't really blame him if he... Well, he turns around, but it, let me let me say what I was trying to say here. If Mihu plays this slow at all, another recall will kill him. That's what I have a problem with. Now, he's coming in here for a vulture raid. He's going to kill a lot of the probes off. Uh, he is trading army supply here for some of the economy, and he gets... Well, I guess not really gets him out, but... Uh, kills off the probes. That's That is a nice move, but... The thing I'm really scared about for him is this main base can't do anything against recall, right? He's got no mines. He's got very minimal turrets. Recall will absolutely slay. So that's what I'm kind of worried about. And the only other way you can keep recall off your back if you don't have great base defense or like patrolling science vessels is to attack, like force your opponent to engage you. Now he flies up and actually just stasises uh, this one science vessel, the Arbiter does get away. I'm not sure how valuable that'll be right this second. He does have recall energy. And we could, like, again, a recall would be pretty big here. That is a low health uh, Arbiter, so he may be a little bit uh, cautious about flying that into turrets and losing it. You know, we can see that there's, like, barely any turret cover, but DeWalt doesn't have any vision down there right now. I'm not sure what those are doing. <laughs> Takes a pretty big volley there. Four Arbiters now. DeWalt finally getting up to a reasonable supply here, up at 161. Is going to come in. And here we go. Stasis on three of those siege tanks. Moving forward with more of these Arbiters. Doesn't have... Actually, doesn't have enough energy for really anything else other than this one more Stasis. He will in a moment. DeWalt continuing to attack in here. Might see another stasis in a second. The Siege Shanks at the third base really helping to fight here as well for Mihu. The Siege Shank out, though, getting very, very low right now. Throws a stasis down onto three more tanks. 
and that's going to be it. DeWalt takes the lead 2-0. to zero.